Are we already in the position to experience what the learning campaign um, that C has been involved with um, over the last several years and that um, and we all successfully and collectively sure, were able to there. get the city to um, adopt universal free school lunch. So I want to thank you for your past efforts and participation and uh, tell you where we are with universal free school lunch and then tell you to start, start us off with other initiatives that we're focusing on that will help you for your support. Um, so, um, so I am joined by lunch for learning parent caucus founding member Monique Lindsay, Sophie Plazier, our youth organizer, and Jason Hilliard, um, the, um, our director of policy campaigns and organizing. And there are also other of the Lunch for Learning Paracaucus members here too, uh, Rosemary and Constance. Okay, so just to kind of kick us off, so just to, to give you a sense of where we are with Universal Free School Lunch, it started in September, uh, reversing decades of bad policy that separated kids in the, the cafeteria by income. And mm -hmm. since that change, we, there are 30,000, approximately 30,000 additional kids eating school each day. Eating lunch. That's a great start. So we think there's a lot more room to, to grow from there. Um, and the city is bringing in 38 million more dollars in federal and state reimbursements from the school lunch program. So we're, look, we have always talked about universal free school lunch as a foundation and then there are other initiatives that we uh, are supporting and advocating for that will build on that. So, and Jason's handing out the lunch for learning agenda that we all we all created together, um, and I'm, we're only going to focus on two key points for for this meeting. But the full agenda um, is um, is being passed around. So last year, the Department of Education Office of School Food created a, a, a redesigned cafeteria model. Um, I can't take just a breath here. Look, if you haven't seen any of them yet, it's um, um, it's that we that we think is on top of Universal is the next biggest thing to get more students eating. It's being done in. Uh, 27 cafeterias, I, I mean, they, about 47 schools are impacted right now, and that, that's the latest numbers we have. And basically, it is, um, it changes the serving lines. If you look at the photos in the back, it's pretty amazing. It's the same food, and it deals with the food appeal issue. It makes the food so much more appealing. Students are eating more, um, more vegetables, less peanut butter and jelly in all the schools, and participation numbers have gone up dramatically. So in, in addition to repackaging the food, there are seating areas redone with more welcoming environments. So it's round tables and diner style um, that the students are really enjoying eating. So we did some preliminary analysis of uh, the school from Wow. The previous November to, to this current, this past November, and you can see that the participation rates are up pretty dramatically. So we are looking to see, to get that funded in the next capital plan for, you know, there are 700, roughly 700 high school, middle school buildings. We have a, a plan for how we'd like to see that expanded out to all those schools all the time. But looking to get um, money committed in the capital budget for um, that's going to be reauthorized in November. We're, we're starting in that process. So, um, again, we think it's very promising. Uh, participation rates are up very significantly. And then I'm going to, um, so that, that's the first thing. I'm going to pass it along to Jason to talk about the next item. Good morning. Our next item, <coughs> I mean, our next item goes to OSHA and the law. I know we uh, believe that this is a basic uh, food access issue. And we're happy that, in this budget, the current budget, that uh, for this year, that there's a pilot program uh, that the council has announced. Uh, it's going to be a comprised of four 
four schools, uh, two public schools, one private Muslim school, one private mm -hmm. Jewish school as well. Mm -hmm. uh, with this program, we feel that it has a great potential and we need students uh, who have dietary restriction and we're like for you to partner with us to monitor uh, this is going to roll out for over a year or close to a year and we'd like you to monitor this and make sure that we continue to put pressure on the city council and mayor to expand this because uh, we find that we're finding throughout the city there are a number of students who are not eating uh, school lunch because of their diet uh, religious dietary restriction and because it's that, nasty. Since we have universal we want to make sure every kid is eating so uh, with that uh, Wow. We'll have some more information Curious. as we make our rounds through the district mm -hmm. uh, throughout the upcoming school year and making sure that uh, we are keeping you all the um, With that, I'm going to turn it over to Sophie, who's going to talk about our youth. Uh, Good morning again. My name is Sophie Sazir, and I'm the youth organizer from the community of Good Advocates. So currently, we have a youth group uh, comprised of students from about three or four different high schools. And our work in the spring has mostly concentrated on creating a survey or learning about campaign billing because um, as we know, students are the consumers of the school food and there often are complaints about the food appeal and issues surrounding the school food. So our group of students have been working to essentially build a campaign around this school food issues and that involves learning one how to build a campaign, learning about policy advocacy. And the results of that was a survey that they implemented and we received about 30 300 responses from three schools around the, the borough, about Manhattan. And we want to continue to grow that. We want to continue to empower our youth to make the change, especially in things that affect them so greatly. So if you have any youth that are interested in uh, being part of our group, our application is on our website. Um, it's communityfoodadvocatesnyc.org. Um, or if you have any more questions, I have business cards and I'm able to pass them out or talk to you about more of what our youth are doing. But it is very important to, for our youth to be empowered and learn how to make the change they need. So good morning everyone, my name is Monique Lindsay, as you all know, and um, former member of um, CPAC, but I come here to say, as I did in the beginning of the year, giving out that survey that we had, um, we took a survey of parents to see how many parents knew about the universal free lunch, we took a survey to see how many students were eating the lunch even after it became free. So it has been doing well. We're still in the process of collecting those surveys. Um, I have to say and be proud of it that Brooklyn, Brooklynite, had the most amount that turned in the survey. And, um, and so that was good. So now I want to talk about some of the things that we can do as parent leaders. Um, there's not enough participation Mm -hmm. in the Lunch for Learning Crusade. I'm going to say that because until all schools have all students eating the universal free lunch, then we have not accomplished what we set out to do. So in that being said, I just mm -hmm. want to say that, you know, we have a parent caucus that came out of the Lunch for Learning campaign, which I am the founding member of that, but there's a lot of us. So if you are a part of the Lunch for Learning Parent Caucus, can you please stand? And I know a lot of people haven't come yet, but there are some of us that are here. Can you please stand? We got Constance, we got Rosemary, and, and, they, and you got me so far here today. But what we do is we meet with the food advocates, we meet with other different organizations, we, we meet with the Chancellor, we meet with other organizations that are concerned about what our children eat in the New York City public schools. And what we want you to do is to make sure that you go back to your school, and you and most, well, most of you here are President's Council, but take it back to your constituents and tell them that we really need this to Fly. We need it to fly. We need everyone to be involved in it. We need to make sure that in our schools we start back having um, the nutrition committee. We had the nutrition committee 
in the past and it has ceased to function. It won't. I think District 1 is the only district that I've found out PTA links. They had an article about District 1 parents are, uh, what was it? A couple of months back, we did have an article about that. And it caught my eye and I said that's something that we really need to do. So I'm going to rely on CPAC, Cancer Parent Advisory Council, to when you start your new committee, let's make a committee that is committed to the Lunch for Learning campaign, because like I stated, until we have all students in New York City public schools having to eat the food and enjoy the food, that's the most important part. So when you go back to your SLTs, your DLTs, just bring it up to them. Say, you know, we want this to take, take off. We want this to continue. We need the money. We need you to see, as you see on the flyer we gave, how great it can look. Mm -hmm. When you have um, the deli style, which looks very good. Some of my um, comrades have went to schools and seen it. And if you see of any schools that are having it, contact us and let us know, because that's our main, uh, our main agenda. You know what I mean, or whatever. Besides getting the money to put, put it through, we really need everyone to participate. So I'm asking y'all as the big time lead people to make sure that you go back to your district, your boroughs, and bring this up, and let everybody participate in this. If y'all have any questions, this is it. <laughs> I just want to add one thing. We're, we're also talking with members of um, city council who have um, to support this as well as we have conversations with the Department of Education. But it's one time capital money for each school, and we're trying to build a core of uh, council members who will put some votes on their, their um, uh, capital money to this next, next budget session. Okay, so I see there is middle school and high school that's being addressed. Is there something that they are planning to go down to the elementary schools? Uh, not that I know of. So right now it's a very limited number of schools, I mean, even at the high school and middle schools. And, and we, again, this was a creation of the Department of Education's Office of School Board. We think it is fabulous. I mean, if you look at the drawings, no, right? It's amazing. Yeah, I'm a parent that has a big eater, and he does not need to Yeah. So it's like most of the time he'll take out whatever he's on and he'll throw in a high chain of Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've seen him too. So that's why I'm like, this would be nice. Yes. But so we're strong now, like you said. We can't push you that way. We can, you're the second person who's raised that recently, yeah. I will say. Uh, um, yes. Yeah. Um, so what you're saying is that the food is going to be sandwiches. For My granddaughter does not eat lunch at school because it's nasty. They get cold, they microwave, there's plastic left on it, it's cold, it's just, it's really bad. So what you're saying, are they, and they're supposed to have, what do you call it, salad bars? They don't have that. So what kind of, what's the change? Is it still gonna be microwaved or it's gonna be actually fresh? So there are salads, I mean, if you look at the salads, there, there are salads with all you kinds know, of vegetables and, and a protein on top. They're very appealing to kids. They look like any salad, and sandwiches as well that you go into the deli okay. anywhere okay. you want to buy. Uh, there, there are hot entrees, special every day, and then there are the regular every day. And it's, it's displayed in a way that's very appealing. And, um, and just get the food. It, there isn't, so it changes the serving line. And mm -hmm. it also comes back on waiting time in line because you can just swipe right. it up with the number and then move. Right, okay. Okay, so you wanted to do a quick question about the food that they can take 80 cents per shop per day. So this is gorgeous, but it costs a lot more processed chicken dinner. It, it's, it's actually the same cost, same food, the quality of the food. If you're actually able to do the tour of any of the kitchens in school, it's actually a brand name food. Um, just the packaging and the quantity of the food in it, it makes it 
unappealing and institutional, and this this changes that. The, um, so it's the same thing, it's just restyled. It's restyled, mm -hmm. and, and the kids have a completely different impression of it. Um, and again, they're eating more vegetables and less of the, the, the peanut butter and jelly and other, other things. No, and it's peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, and I, I think you yeah, say, I hear you know, it doesn't stick because what it looks like to me is like much better food, more, you know, vegetables, stuff, and all that shit. Yeah, no, it's, it's all uh, within the reimbursement. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you mention in your presentation that you have to provide this to private schools as well. And to the process. I heard you say a private joint school or a private No, no, it's a separate issue. That's the uh, allowing commercial food. Right. We, we, we're, so we as community food advocates in the lunch and learning campaign are focused on public school students. The city council is doing a pilot with halal and kosher food to public schools and to private schools. Our concentration, that, that's their choice to do. That's, that's their, where, where our, our charge is for public schools. Thank you. Thank you. So we have to have a choice to find the more questions, but we plan to not go too late on the schedule. So, you all know PTA name and Rachel Pine. Mm -hmm. We have a few conversations with Mandela, right. and then she met with the executive board. In effectively to um, discuss how we can better partner together, and how we can do that. So, I think she should have the microphone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Fine, as Marco said, and I am a co-founder and director of PCA Link, which is a nonprofit volunteer-run organization that solely supports New York City public school PTA. And I'm a former public school PTA president from District 15. Mm -hmm. um, some of you may know that over the last three months, we have been going around the city um, training parent leaders basically on elections, but we also worked with some districts on how to better engage parents, and we're doing um, an orientation for new parent leaders um, at a combined district meeting on Monday. And it, it's, we also did 10 trainings um, for elections last year um, all across the city. It was really an amazing experience for us to hear the questions that the parents had, and, and to, to also see the gray areas, like where um, you know our practice is not exactly covered by the regs, and also to learn from, from parent leaders around the city. And as we were going around working with different parent leaders in this different districts this year, I started to think about how we could better partner with CPAC. Um, and sometimes we would end up in a district and we would see one of you there. We were recently in District 14 in Sajesna. And, um, but we didn't plan, plan and work, and work with her. And as I was thinking about it, I went to, to Marco and said, you know, could we talk about how we could maybe streamline some of our training? And could we come and maybe work with the members of CPAC so you could take some of this information and then go turnkey it back to your special needs council. And it's not also that we have all the answers when we would come to your presentation. It would, the presentation would evolve through your participation and would allow you also to share your best practices and effective strategies and ask questions of one another. Um, and so after I spoke to Marco about this, he invited me to speak with the executive council and they wanted me to present this idea to all of you. It's not that we would not continue to do the work that we were doing out in the districts with the family leaderships, but hopefully with all of you also, um, but that we could all work together. And I want to get your opinions and feelings on that. Great. It helps me out when I do stuff. The 
and things is very straightforward. But I would appreciate one little clarification for especially for us. We went from a PA to a PCA here. And the question for you was, and I didn't have the an answers, and you go into a PCA link, it doesn't really give you an in-depth way to explain it to people so that they understand. Automatically, people start to come in and think they have the money spent.
So we need to write those down and get the clarifications and, and get the word out there. So, um, you know, I think in partnership with PCN, because I think they do do such a great job, I think we should definitely, I mean, I, I see a lot of my head, so I hope I'm trying to but um, I, I think it would be really helpful, I think, that to, to you know, resolve something like this. I'm not sure to solve your issue in particular, but um, perhaps the knowledge base that is PCAT that comes out of the President's Council and PTA could draft a plain English version of the Chancellor's regs that really serves as like a I think in some ways I think it's like we put out like the and they're on the website best practices. Right. We probably um, should both expand that. But I think it's more helpful in some ways to do it by subject matter. I think one of the issues, in a sense, one of the issues with the chances rights is they're just so long, and they have to be long. There's no way around it. But sometimes it's helpful to have, like, I know some of the roles, you know, wait, what, are, what is the role of the PTA, PTA president? What is the role of the president and council president? So that it's more top specific, you know, what are best financial practices? Um, things like that. And we can certainly do one. I don't think there's one of those actually. Yes. Yes. Yes, I know, yes. We, we, we actually have on calendar a little bit for later a go around our holistic needs and, and issues that we can discuss with, with Rachel. Please, Yolanda. Yeah. Um, we are going to be in about 15 minutes to be uh, enjoying something of our new chancellor, and um, we would love mm. to give him a warm reception. And as such, I would like to invite um, non CSAC members to come join us at the, uh, at the table at the ring. So, sure, no problem. We can demonstrate a robust level of engagement. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, uh, just to continue the conversation in terms of what you just brought up. Um, yes. So, one of the conversations that we had last month was to get a, a working group together because I think that after it, you're going to have a 15 minutes where you're going to then open up for any concerns, we want to be sure that we address uh, what is needed in order for you to be successful, right? So that is part of our plans for next year. We already have um, dates and also location for our monthly, right? Monthly PA, PTA training sessions. But once again, they will be um, planned based on what we hear from you. That will make sense, right? Um, and uh, we also want to look forward to because we started our conversation with the IIT, I had a conversation with Peter Quinn, who is the CIO, the, the person in charge of the technology um, group of individuals, so that starting in September, whenever we start our sessions, we can start recording. Because that's a, another conversation that we had last month, where sometimes the time is not the best time for each and every one of our parents, but if you do have access to the website, and you're able then to access the webinar that has already been uh, completed, then you're able then to revisit it um, and also maybe bring it to your session when you have your meeting with uh, the council, okay? So we're really looking forward to, to that. Um, we're listening to you. We want to be sure that um, everything is uh, meaningful and purposeful because once again, we want to ensure that, um, that you are successful in, in your roles and, and in your knowledge base. So with that said, um, I do want to uh, remind you of uh, schools that have not done so to please share with your principals election dates and times. Um, I just received information that of our close to 1,800 schools, only 445 wow. have reported completion of elections. That's, wow. That's, that's um, low. Yeah. Only 445 schools. 
certifications from charter schools? Are we doing the charters? No, we don't, right? No. 